Hi, I'm Greg Barron from Rideable Bicycle Replicas in Alameda, California. And today, I'm here to show you how to install solid rubber tires on old-fashioned bikes, also known as high wheels and penny farthings. Um, it's something that is not the easiest thing in the world to do, so we're going to learn how to do it today. Okay, so in order to install a tire, you need a few things. First, you need your tire. The tire itself is a solid piece of rubber with a small hole through the center. Through the hole, you pass a wire. Now this is a heavy gauge uh, electroplated wire, it's about 120 thousandths, it's high tensile steel, and it feeds all the way through the tire. The wire itself is used to compress the rubber down to the rim, because if you look Carefully, you'll see that the length of the tire is way longer than the circumference of the wheel. And I'll get into this later, but it's important. Um, the other items you need, of course, are your wheel, and they come in various sizes depending on the size of the bike. You need a couple different types of lubricants. And in this particular type of tire installation, I have a special hand tool that I use. It's dedicated to this. I have a couple of anchor points on the set of pallet racks and you can use two by fours in your garage if you need to as long as they're good sturdy posts you can tie into them and then at the other end I have your basic come along um, so the tools aren't terribly difficult to procure except for this one here which is a specialized tool specifically for this task I also have a good pair of cutting pliers and a good pair of uh, needle nose pliers as well um, once you get all that stuff together and have it properly prepped, you can go right ahead and do this. Um, I will go over this in a number of steps because there are basically a couple of steps and I'll try to make it clear for you so that you can do this at home. So what I've got here is my tire material with the wire pre-installed. Alright, the tire has a 3 16 hole in it. It's got this 120 thousandths thickness high tensile electroplated wire running all the way through it. The tire is nice and lubricated, so the wire slides right on through. If you buy tire without the wire in it, you have to install the tire in it. Usually you do that by coiling up your tire in a nice coil about this size, or actually about the same coil size as your wire, and then coil it with your coil of wire, you feed the thing through so it so it will actually feed in the tire. If you try to straighten out your wire and straighten out the tire and push it through, you're going to have problems. So use your use your existing coils to, to work with you. Now, I have here a simple cable clamp. Basically, this is what we use to put our wire together, to hold our wire and put our loops in it. So you run it through, pass your dummy in back through, and then what you're going to want to do is tighten up those nuts until it's good and tight. Ideally, you want the smallest clamps you can get. Usually the quarter inch clamp works pretty well. Um, the reason that you want small clamps is if you've got a tool that doesn't have much room to work with, you need to maximize on size. So make those good and tight. And then what you want to do is you want to take your free end and bend it back over your clamp so that if it's loose, it doesn't come pulling out. There's one, and we'll do the other one the same way. Okay, so when you're ready to install your tire, basically one of the first things you need to do is lubricate the rim because the rubber needs to be able to slide fully, freely on the rim. So what I use is your basic tire shine. Um, it's predominantly a silicone-based uh, lubricant that makes your tires on your car shiny. In this case, it makes everything really slippery and the tire slides. So what we'll do is, you spray it into the rim and you want to get this all the way around so that you don't have any spots that are unlubricated. And once it's done, I generally tend to make sure that everything's good and slippery and there aren't any spots that you miss. Because if you miss when you finally get tension on the tire, it uh, will want to hang up a little bit. In an installation, that's not a really good thing. So. Your next thing to do is make sure that your tire is lubricated where the wire is making contact. So I use WD-40 for this, 
basically I will flood the center of the tire and this allows the wire to move freely. Um, that is also important because if your wire is not moving, when you take up tension you'll get spots where the tire won't want to flow properly around the rim. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to position the wheel on the tire. Now, if you look at this, you'll see that I have a lot of rubber flying around here. There are reasons for that. The first thing we'll do is we're going to secure the tire to the rim to make manipulating it just a little bit easier. So, we clamp the tire in place, and then we take our spacer tool, and that's my technical term for it, and we slide the wire through the gap. This is the tire gapping tool and it is used specifically to keep a gap in the tire as you install it so that you can work on it and put a joint in. Now I happen to use a cold joint and I bend the wire over to get my cold joint. Some people use silver solder and braise it together. Now I don't personally like using fire near my wheels because I don't want to damage the, the paint finish and I don't want to take the temper out of my tire, or excuse me, out of my wire because the, it's important that the wire have maintain its temper to keep from breaking. Now every joint I've ever seen break, the vast majority of them were on, um, they were on tires that had had braised joints. So we got our, our wire through and it's ready to cross and ready to put the ready to put our hooks in. So there's one there. And stay. Hook up that wire there. Pick up my slot. Make sure everything is set in position proper. Now, as you see, as I start to draw this wire, the tire starts sucking down onto the wheel. Now you got to make sure your wires stay in position and it's all set. And once it's all set, you're ready to put your final, final draw on it. So, are we ready? Let's go. Oh, this is not working nearly as well as the last ones did. Here we go. That's because I don't have my wheel up proper height. You want to make sure that your draw wire is pretty much at the same height as your wheel. This is a 48 inch wheel. These wires are about four feet off the ground. It makes working a lot easier. So now, I'm not paying attention. Sucked it up a little too fast. There's tire back on the rim. Tire back on the rim. Make sure it's centered. Draw it up the rest of the way. get it tight make sure your tire is good and tight in there now you can see I can move it but it's not flopping around too tight and what will happen is when you spin your wheel to put your joint on it the tension of the wire bending over itself will stretch it cause it to, to bend stretch thin and then it'll actually break at that joint there that's that's how you get a cold joint failure whereas with a soldered joint you get a joint failure there because the tempers come out of the wire and it'll break at the end of the solder joint so both of them are potentially caused by the wire being too tight so you want to avoid over tension your tire at any time anyway okay so now we'll pull off our clamps pick up the wheel from the bottom flip it over Set it back down, and here's your joint right here. The wire is not distorted, it's bent nicely, and it is ready to cut free. So get everything out of the way. I put my foot on the bottom of the wheel, hold the wire with my pliers to keep it from unbending once I take the tension off of it, 
and I crimp it, again, because I've got the proper tension, I can bend the wire down and it stays in place. If it was way too tight and you cut it loose and let go of it, you would actually see the wire start to unbend because of the load on the wire. Cutting your other side loose, crimping this wire down. And this is what you get. Now, from this point, you're going to want to pull out your spacer. Now, if your tension's right on your wire, the joints will hold right. Then all you do is you lift your spacer out, and all that compressed rubber wants to spring back. Just give it a little bit of assistance. And that closes up your gap in your joint, and that prevents your wire from ever unfolding on itself. And this is a finished wheel.